Hello and welcome to this HRD Connect podcast. I am delighted to introduce Gemma Tamelti, Managing Director from HR Department. Gemma is joining us today to share her experience on self-employment and HR skills. Welcome, Gemma. Hi. What motivates HR professionals to start their own business, using their skills and experience in an entirely different way to being employed in corporate life? The founder of the company, Sue Tamilty's motivations for starting the HR department are exactly the motivations that we see in HR professionals today. She was completely sick of corporate life. Um, She came out of that, went into interim, but really found it to be sort of feast or famine and actually found that she was working for some some pretty pretty awful HR directors, as she puts it herself. Um, And while she was doing that, she actually found that there was a lot of small businesses that were... um, really needing some HR help and they seem to appreciate um, her advice and support um, in a much better way than the people that she was actually working for. So she decided to see if this business could work providing outsourced HR to small businesses in the local area Um, and actually it obviously worked really well and it grew really well. So when we speak to HR professionals about starting their own HR business what we find is many of those um, many of those motivations are present. So they're sick of corporate life and the office politics. They are trying to balance family and full-time work, often missing bedtimes, not able to get involved in school activities, missing sports days and not being able to pick them up from school. And actually for a lot of women um, who we speak to, and the vast majority of our HR business owners are are women, um, there's actually a a lack of part-time HR opportunities at a senior level. And so often women are sort of really having to to choose between staying in, in an HR senior director role or coming out and doing something different. There's, there's not very much part-time opportunity. We speak to a lot of people who are facing a redundancy and a career crossroads, possibly those who are nearing retirement but not quite ready to hang up their boots yet and want to do something for themselves. Um, and often where they've reached a ceiling where there's nowhere else really for them to go um, within an organization. Um, and one of the key things is also being sick of travel, commuting, international travel and being away from home. So I think what we see, and you know, we know this in the HR sphere anyway, is employees want more flexibility. But often that flexibility actually isn't so available, to, available at a senior level. So HR professionals are considering creating this flexibility for themselves by running their own business. Um, and, you know, HR professionals aren't alone in that. There was a record number of startups in the UK, sort of 660,000 in 2016. But we know that actually the business setup and the running side and the sales and marketing side of running the business is what's so daunting to HR professionals. And that's often where we come in. And can you offer some advice and guidance on the best ways to make that transition into self-employment? Absolutely. It can be a serious culture shock. Um, So you go from having a regular paycheck every month with pension contributions, sick pay, holiday leave to no salary immediately, no guaranteed income, no certainty of how long it will take before you can start reaping the the rewards and also no real kind of experience in in running a business. Um, You know, how do you structure that business? What is your offering? Um, What's your pricing? All of these questions which, you know, are given to you in another organization, you have to come up with yourself. Um, And one of the toughest things to learn is that, you know, when you're employed, you go from having an IT department, office cleaners, somebody to do the admin, to everything relying on you. You are that whole team. If the PC breaks down or the printer breaks down, you've got to find someone to fix it or you've got to fix it yourself. You're often the office cleaner too. And all that administration... Until you can afford to employ somebody to do it, that is down to you. So it is a little bit of a, a, of a culture shock. And obviously what we do at the HR department is help to ease that. We've got a central support team which, um, which really kind of does that back office support, particularly in kind of marketing activities. But the startup phase of self-employment is undoubtedly tough. You've got to be a doer. You've got to be focused. You've got to roll your sleeves up and get stuck in. It really is all down to you. Your success or challenges will be your responsibility. So you've got to be extremely good at holding yourself accountable for your activities and their impacts, and there really is no one else to blame. But the rewards can be great financially and personally if you are willing to take that leap of faith. Um, So my top tips would be understand that this is your business. It will be short-term pain, but but will have long-term gain. And that means in terms of 
a workload, it will be tough, and there will be financial pain as well. So starting your own business, and particularly starting your own HR business, is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you join the HR department, you'll follow a proven model, and it's a much quicker route to market, but it's still the effort is down to you to grow your business. So second top tip, do your research in your local area, your competition, the market, what you'll be offering, how will you price it, how will you get customers. Of course, if you started with the HR department, this is exactly what we support you with. You really need to get to grips. So top tip three is get to grips with your understanding of your personal finances and business finances quickly. Work out your personal survival budget. How long can you survive without an income? What family or business loan support will you need? And really try and understand the the kind of mechanics of running a business. What, you know, running your profit profit and loss account, running your business bank account, cash flow forecasts. um, And really think about setting yourself a plan and goals and targets to make sure that you can hit those um, income forecasts. Again, this is exactly what we would support you with if you were to join the HR department. Um, And make sure you've got the backing of family and friends. I think this is the most important one. You will absolutely need their support whilst you get your new venture up the ground, not just financially, but emotionally. It is tough, um, but very, very rewarding. So you just need to make sure you've got that support network to help you. Okay, so that being said, why wouldn't somebody who wanted to run their own business just do it by themselves? Most HR professionals who come to us are highly expert in their field in terms of HR, but they don't actually understand how to set up and run an HR business. They really don't know where to start. And often, actually, most people thinking about having an idea of running their own business don't. So with the HR department, they have access to a proven business model and a startup and support package that creates a faster route to success. Um, And it also has the backup of a vast network of 60 other franchisees who've all been there, done it, and built successful businesses. So whatever year, whatever part part of the journey that you're on in terms of running your own business, you can look ahead and go, ah, there's that person. They're that successful in year five. I wonder what they did. Pick up the phone. What did you do in this situation? So you've got all of these people who've gone before you that will share that knowledge with you, that will that will recycle that best practice and that will act as support. You've got an established brand. You've got a proven model. And if you're thinking of starting your own business, you need a website, a logo, terms of business, offering, pricing, marketing materials, commercial agreements. The list goes on and on and on. And the time to set all of this up, and of course the money, is vast. And so if you join the HR department, it would mean you getting access to a proven model and an established brand, and we can get you up, running, and trading with a website and all of those things in place in as little as eight weeks. So it's a cheaper and more effective route to market. And that ongoing support is also there. It's not just in terms of startup. At every stage of your business journey, um, the network and the organization will support you. We support those businesses in year one as much as we do through all of those stages. And some of our franchisees have been with us for 12 years now. And all their learning in all their business experience is passed down through the network, as well as the best practice from everybody else. So, you know, yes, HR people are people people. They don't really like to be on their own. And this way, they have got their own business, but they're not by themselves with a central office support team and a huge collaborative network working together to promote the brand. And that's why we find that people join us is because they will be their own business. um, They will be their own business owner. They will be a director, but they're not on their own. And they can follow in the footsteps of the success that we've, we've had in the last 12, 13 years of franchising. Can you please share one of your best success stories and why HR directors who are looking to move away from the corporate world should consider joining the HR department? There are so many HR department success stories. Um, The wonderful thing about our model is that we're really open to any excellent professional joining us, no matter what their ambitions are. So if they want to grow a bigger business and a team of people, that's great. That's fine by us. We'll support them to achieve that. But if they're happy operating on their own, Um, if they want to kind of work um, not full time, if they want to do that in their later years of their career or um, or um, or if they want to stay with us for decades and keep growing and growing, that's fine, too. We often get parents of young children who deliberately want to keep it small whilst their children are growing up and then intend to grow it later. Um, So we never put targets in place. We don't take a percentage of profit and we support all of our HR professionals in whatever they want to achieve. Um, So there are success stories in all of those different types of ways of running our own HR department business. But let me just, I'll just highlight a couple. Our South London office now, it's one of our most established offices. They've got a team of 10. They're opening another office within their territory. And actually the franchisee now, 
after running his business for this long, has actually stepped back a bit and put an MD in. So he's kind of managing to, to come out the other end of running his own business and reaping the rewards that way. Our South Workshire office has got a team of eight. They've been going for 12 years, just bought another territory, and they're growing and growing. Our Southampton office, in her first year, she's expanded her territory already and is already outperforming all the stretch performer targets. Two franchisees with their own territories have now decided to go into business together in London as well. They're doing incredibly well. And the Edinburgh office have just bought the health and safety license for the whole of Scotland. We've got some amazing success stories. And whatever people want to achieve, be it a small business just on their own, working with um, SMEs in their local area, or growing something that's much bigger, that's a potential retirement plan, anything is possible. If people follow the model and work hard and take responsibility, they can achieve the dream of running their own businesses. But with the backup of all of us, a proven model, a brand and a fantastic network, which really is the biggest HR team that they will ever work in. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Gemma. HR department, along with a multitude of other thought leaders, will be joining the HRD Summit this year. To see more content from them, please visit our website at hrdsummit.com.